Hey, y'all, this is your buddy, John Rich, Nashville recording artist, and you're listening to Brandon and Alan on the Backstage Pass, powered by the SportsGuysPodcast.com on the home of the Opry, AM 650 WSM. And welcome inside the Backstage Pass. Always a busy day here, powered by the SportsGuysPodcast.com and always on WSM every Sunday morning from 5.30 to 6 a.m. right there, too. Of course, tune in, iHeartRadio, WSMRadio.com, and, of course, the WSM Mobile app. The full squad is here. Brandon Morrell, Alan Price here too. And of course, a great guest this Sunday morning. Wake up, drink some coffee, have some fun. And uh, you know him as one of the best in country music out there too uh, from the group Big and Rich. Uh, John Rich joins us here on the Backstage Pass. John, how you doing? Man, I'm doing great. Thanks for having me on. Excited to, excited to have this conversation. <laughs> well, a lot there too. Well, you guys have had a lot going on. Let me catch up. I mean, obviously, you know, Redneck Riviera doing well right there on Broadway. And of course, you got some new projects you guys are working on a song we're going to talk about called Revelation here in a little bit, but uh, fill us in. Yeah, it's been a it's been a really fun summer. Uh, Gretchen Wilson has come out of hibernation uh, finally, and uh, we are doing a show on the road. Uh, we've been doing them since I think April of this year. We actually have two more coming up uh, this weekend, but um, it's Big and Rich with Gretchen with Cowboy Troy. So it, it, it's almost like the early music mafia days before any of us had record deals and we were kind of all just spinning our wheels and we'd get together and jam on Tuesday nights. And um, now we're out on stage and, you know, me and Big Kenny, we'll knock out ah, 30, 40 minutes and then we'll go, ladies and gentlemen, the redneck woman, Gretchen Wilson. And then she comes out on stage and I mean, people lose their ever loving minds when she walks out because it's been several years since she went out and toured. So she comes out and she smacks them with, with three or four big songs. And then here comes Cowboy Troy. And then me and Kenny capped that show off. And it has been an absolute blast to make music with them again. And the crowds are, it's it's unreal, man, how big these crowds are. I guess everything old is new again. That old phrase has some truth to it. Yeah, no doubt. Looking back at it, too. And, you know, I've seen a lot of artists come back, like I said, in your guys in your time in that era back there in the late 90s, early 2000s. That music, to me, John, is starting to make a little bit of a an appearance again. At least I'm hearing that on you know, Sirius X on the highway and most of the major stations, the streaming stations we're listening to right now, that old 90s country sound, or just like you said, the music mafia, that's a good thing for, for country music. Also, vinyls make a little bit of a comeback. Yeah, yeah, I think country music's always been that way. I mean, when when me and Big Kenny showed up, country music had, had been really pop, 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 pop for quite a while. And, you know, as my granny Rich used to say, it sounded like they went to the school of redundancy school. That was her famous quote. And I said, yeah, it's kind of, we need somebody to shake it up. And so when Kenny and I came out, it absolutely did that. And so, but now I think you're right. There's a guy named Zach Top that's out there who I like a whole lot. Um, yeah, he sounds like he could have come out in 1992, 1994. My own son, uh, Cash, he's coming up on 15. And he's listening to uh, the 90s stuff, the 80s and 90s stuff. And he asked me, why is this, why is this uh, kind of country music? so much better than the new stuff. Now that's him, that's him saying it, not me. I said, well, I don't know. What's better to it about you? He said, well, for starters, I can tell the difference between all the singers. Meaning I can tell the difference between Alabama and Restless Heart and Diamond Rio. And I can tell the difference between Brooks and Dunn and, you know, the Judds and whoever. Like he, he's like, I really love how everybody had their own sound. I said, yeah, well, you know, uh, it's it's starting to come back to that. We got some showing up now that have their own sound. But I think in general, country fans have always appreciated, you know, the unique qualities of, of the country singers that they bring to the stage. You know, you've got a song out now called uh, Revelation. We're going to play it here now, but I want to talk about it before we play it here, too, uh, on the uh, backstage pass again presented by our friends over at SandyJuneMusic.com. Check out our new single, Rolling Strong, across all those digital streaming platforms, too. Uh, talk about uh, this one, too, because you did this with Sonia Isaacs at the same time. I love this rendition of Revelation. Let's let's talk about it. Well, this is unlike any song I've ever written. And so, you know, I started out at 18, 19 years old, making country music. I'm 50, turned 50 this last year, or actually this year, and written over 2,000 songs. Um, nothing's ever hit me quite like this one, Revelation, though. I was not a thinking about writing this song, the subject matter, if you're wondering what's it about, well, it's about the book of Revelation in the Bible. Mm -hmm. I wasn't thinking about yeah. writing a song about that, because let's be honest, how do you write a song about the book of Revelation? I mean, that's one of the most intense things that humans have ever written. Apostle John wrote it 2,000 years ago, but it hit me like a ton of bricks, this chorus rolling through my head, calling out Revelation. 
to the point where I said, I've got to write this down. So I grabbed a pencil and a notebook, pulled an old guitar off the wall. And about an hour, this song had been written. And then the question was, well, what am I supposed to do with this? You know, I look up to God and I'm like, what do you want me to do with the song like this? I mean, I don't know what to do with it. And basically, I felt like he was telling me, man, just make it as great as you can and push it out there as hard as you possibly can. Now, keep in mind, I don't I no longer have a record deal or a publishing deal. I don't work for any company in Nashville. I have no affiliation with anybody. My record label is called Rich Records, and it consists of a P.O. box. That's the whole thing. I'm, I'm the employee, the boss, and the CEO all at the same time. So I'm as independent as you can get, which in a way is a great thing because it allows me to put out songs like Revelation. And so this song came out. I did a big interview with Tucker Carlson that's now been viewed four or five million times. Um, and we talked about what's going on in our country and in the world and what the Bible says about things that are going on in our country and in the world and how that how that kind of crosses into a lot of the prophecies that have been written down for thousands of years. The video actually shows, it shows the devil and Michael the Archangel coming across a field in Tennessee in front of a little white church to, to battle each other. And I'm standing in between the two of them. It's spiritual warfare in, in a music video, which I also don't think anybody's ever tried to do that. I didn't really know what would happen or how it would be received who would love it, who would hate it. All I knew is I was supposed to put it out. And it, it's been one of the most impactful songs maybe ever that I've ever put out. It's only been out a month and it is just running millions and millions of views uh, every week. Well, here it is, Revelation on WSM, the home of the opera here. Wake up with us every Sunday morning again from 5.30 to 6 a.m. right there too on TuneIn, iHeartRadio. And of course, our friends out there too, the sportsguyspodcast.com and out there the WSM mobile app and WSMRadio.com. It's John Rich and Revelation. Here it is. Crank it up. People cursed his name, bowed at the altar of the father of lies. But there's a number to their days, and all their evil ways. The Lord's gonna turn away from all their cries. Stones around their necks They'll feel the shaking When the trumpet sounds And no matter where they hide There'll be nowhere to run When Jesus puts his mighty foot on the ground To the evil ones and all the wickedness they've done There'll be no time to turn around As the stars begin to hit the ground And the mountains fall and the veil is torn With the sound of that seventh horn Oh, revelation I can feel it coming Like a dark train running
days were done The king is coming And it won't be long Hey y'all, this is Phil Vassar And you're listening to the Backstage Pass On the home of the Opry WSM AM 650 Hey guys, Brandon Muriel here Host of the Backstage Pass Alongside my co-host Alan Price And I want to tell you about one of the best kept secrets In Smyrna, Tennessee Located in the heart of the Depot District, you'll find the Front Street Pub. Owners Thomas Williams and his wife Rachel have made it a personal mission to provide each customer with the best food, coldest drinks, and the friendliest staff around. Check them out on Facebook and, of course, their website, thefrontstreetpub.com, for all the latest details on upcoming events, concerts, and shows. And, of course, we thank them for bringing us John Rich this week on WSM. It's brought to you by the Front Street Pub. Hey, y'all, this is Terry McBride, and you're listening to The Backstage Pass on WSM Radio. And back here with John Rich on the Backstage Pass. Again, Alan Price here with yours truly. And our, our show today is presented by our friends with Sandy June Music, sandyjunemusic.com. And, of course, out there, Rolling Strong, the latest single. Make sure you guys go check it out. A great, great song and a, a great tribute to our law enforcement, our military, and, of course, our police officers out there, too, at the same time. Love this song, and uh, you guys need to go check it out. Our first responders, Rolling Strong, out there at Sandy June Music. Dot com back here with John Rich and I uh, love that song so much. You, you, you're, you're right too. It's unlike anything you've ever done too. Revelation and uh, great story told about. Hey, take us back a little bit, John, to uh, Son of a Preacher Man. I thought this was one of the best country albums to come out in a long time too. You, you had uh, shutting Detroit down, which was fantastic too. Well, before I go into that, I just want to say thank you because you are the first and only country station I'm aware of that's ever played Revelation. I just want to say thank you for doing that because it's been seen online millions of times, but no real terrestrial country station to my knowledge has ever played it. So I really appreciate you doing that. That's quite an honor, especially this country station of all. So I really appreciate that. Uh, that, that son of a preacher man record that was during about a two year hiatus of big and rich. So big Kenny wanted to go do things around the world. He, he did, he did all kinds of stuff and I wanted to too. That's when I did celebrity apprentice was right in that window with, with Donald Trump. Um, and there was a whole batch of songs that I had written that I knew did not fit big and rich, but they sure fit me personally pretty well. And so I was talking to Kenny. I said, you care if I put out a solo thing? He goes, no, nah, man, I'll, I'll be the first one to buy it. You know? So I put it out and that song shutting Detroit down. I wrote with John Anderson, who's my all time favorite country singer. I always tell him that he's the George Jones of my generation, because you cannot mistake who that is when you hear that voice coming through. So he's a he's an absolute hero of mine. And we were watching all that nonsense uh, back in 09 and 10 where the uh, the government was bailing out all the car companies. And then the car companies were laying off thousands of people while they're getting bail bailed out with our money. And remember how mad we all got about that. And I was talking to John A about it. And he said, well, probably I'll write a song about that. I mean, he said, that's what Haggard would have done. I said, good point. <laughs> and so we write shutting Detroit down and, um, it got spun one time by a friend of mine in Detroit at WYCD he played it on his morning show and I didn't intend on releasing it or anything. And it went absolutely crazy. Wound up with me on stage at the ACMs by myself, acoustic singing that song. And um, I still get asked to play that all the time, man. It's, it's always cool when a song hits home like that. Yeah. It's an incredible song. When you think about songs that have an impact on someone, you know, such as revelation, I know is going to, but it's one of those songs almost like, God bless the USA. When you hear it for the first time, you know exactly where you were and what you were doing. Mm -hmm. And I remember exactly where I was and exactly what I was doing the first time I heard Shutting Detroit Down and how it felt. And to see the video with some of my heroes, you know, Christofferson, who's just a legend in everyone's mind. And when you talk about pulling some heartstrings and you get to that point of the video where he hits his knees, buddy, I about buckled right along with him. So that's... That's yeah. how you touch America right there. So well done, my friend. I, I still, I was thinking about that all day today when I was like, man, we're, we're going to have John on. You know, I, I'm hoping we're talking about this because it still has well, an impact on people. I appreciate you bringing it up. I don't get to talk about that song much anymore. And and then that was Mickey Rourke, you know, who was down there working the line and Chris oh, yeah. Like, oh yeah, man. I mean, uh, those two guys, two of the best actors there ever were. I couldn't yeah. afford them. But the only reason I was able to get them was just friendship over a long period of time. And I sent them the song and I said, this, this song is so monumental in our country right now with what's going on. Would you guys come in and, and act in the video? I mean, they don't do music videos. Come on. Mickey right. Rourke and Christofferson. But they did. It's one of the biggest honors I ever had that those two men traveled to Nashville to do that. 
Fantastic. I'm going to go back even more. This is how we do our homework here on the show, but I'm going back to some old school John Rich here. I pray for you. And of course, uh, when you love someone off the record that came out in 2000 underneath the same moon, which is a fantastic record I love listening to, because that's the thing about music. You listen to one song, it's storytelling for country music. And those two specifically, John, uh, I pray for you. And when you love someone, those two hit right at home and I think resonated with fans. Well, I appreciate that. You know, the thing about uh, the thing about country artists, I think the fans probably always think, well, they, they write a song, they record the song, it's a hit. They write a song, they record a song, it's a hit. That's not how it works. <laughs> they you know, all the record, the rec- Yeah, right. The records you're mentioning, like uh, underneath the same moon record, that was after Lone Star had fired me from the band and before I had met Big Kenny, before Big and Rich was a thing. So I had about four years of no record deal, no publishing deal, no nothing, because that, that record underneath the same moon, I was hoping – I would have a hit as a solo artist after being, you know, ejected from Lone Star, but it died, man. The first single died. The second single died. I get a call from the record label as I'm on my way to another radio station to do a radio visit that we're dropping you from the label. So you just turn around in the highway and head back home and nothing happened uh, from that point forward until Big and Rich got a record deal in 2003. So, you know, making country music for real, is not a hobby. It, it mm-hmm. is treacherous. It is disappointing. It's uh, the comp- the level of competition and the the politics of the record labels and the publishing companies. When you know the guy that signed you gets fired and now a new guy comes in and he doesn't like you very much, so you're out too. I mean, your whole world can go 100 miles an hour to slamming into a brick wall over and over and over. And so I say it's not a hobby because. You have to come back out of those situations if you're serious about it and that's what you love to do. You got to go record a new record. You got to write new songs. You got to promote them again, take another run at it. And uh, thankfully, the fans behind me, all the way back to the Lone Star days and to this very day, have stuck with me. And they, they, sh- if I give them good music, they respond in a big way. You know, you touched on that too about just how hard this business is and how hard it is to, to just take a note and until you get to a yes. And maybe, maybe sometimes that's nine out of 10 of those before you get to that one yes, you know, 90% of that. But what advice, I guess, furtherly would you kind of give, John, to those younger artists now? Because there's so many of them. And I frequently visit there for CRS week and CMA week, you know, throughout the year. And just see so many people, you know, playing music up and down Broadway, which is a great thing to see. And so many of the great songwriters, you know, trying to make it in that town. But what advice would you give to those new artists to kind of keep persevering? Well, the first thing is, is to overproduce, overproduce. I need 10 songs for a record. I'm going to go write 30 songs. No, go write 250 songs. You know, go sit in the room with people who are way better than you are. Always, you know, sit with the masters of the pen and pencil. Sit, sit with the ones who are the Albert Einsteins of, of country music, because that's the only way you ever get really better. And then the other thing is, is you've got to know your direction. You know, just because you can hit the high notes, just because you're good looking, just because of whatever, whatever machine you may have behind you, that does not dictate who wins and loses. It's all about can you connect with the audience? And the only thing that connects with the audience is authenticity. That's it. It's always been the game. Authenticity. They can market somebody with $10 million, and if they're not really authentic and not, not engaging their crowd from who they actually are in a very authentic way, they never make it. It's always the ones, you know, look at Oliver Anthony, a guy with no record deal, no nothing. And he comes out with Richmond North of Richmond. And he's just singing his guts out on a flatbed trailer in the woods with no budget, sticks the song out. That's the, that's the biggest song in probably 20 years, maybe longer than that. I mean, it was unbelievable what happened. So authenticity is number one and putting yourself around people who are better than you. You, you have to do that. You can't, just always be in a room with somebody you can out sing. That will not make you better. It's iron sharpens iron, as, as, as the book says. Which brings me to my next point, John. When are we getting in a room? <laughs> <laughs> hey, man. I'm sure I can learn a lot from you when we talk about things, you know, not just you as an artist, but, you know, anyone who knows you, anyone who's followed your career, the impact that you've had on this industry as a songwriter, uh, as a businessman. You know, we talked off camera, you know, before we – did this you know about gretchen wilson and how you know you guys got that started you know bradley gaskin and what about aldine man i mean that first yeah. record hicktown you practically wrote half of it you yeah. know so to to do that and to be a part of someone who was just like you at one time starting out 
and you know to hit superstardom i mean that people still jam that hicktown record man and it because it's great music yeah well that goes back to my point of overproduce overwork overcreate like you know there's a reason al dean had four number one songs that i did not have i mean i wrote them but they weren't big and rich hits is because kenny and i were writing literally every single day of the week maybe we take a day off here and there but it was almost every day because that's all we cared about doing and so you write hundreds of songs and you only put 10 or 11 on your record so what about all these other really good ones and here comes gretchen here comes al dean um keith anderson was another one picking wildflowers man that was a big hit uh faith and tim started coming at us and a bunch of other people but the only reason i was able to land those cuts is because they had to be created you right. had to go sit down and think and work and trudge through it and do the best you can and and have all that sitting kind of in your catalog for, for when the opportunity arrives right we talked that we actually had uh, terry mcbride on the show here a couple weeks back and we talked about amarillo sky and what an impact it had on on their career and then you know fast forward to the aldine days i mean what when you talk about something and keeping it authentic amarillo skies is as authentic as it gets i mean that's real life real people doing what they do every day with with no glory just you know doing what they do you know, well, so there, and there's a reason that song is so authentic because that's where i grew up was amarillo texas so i watched my uncles and the old ones from world war ii uh that were still farming old man out there you know uh got wrinkles half inch deep all over him look like john wayne or something out there on the like track made of leather <laughs> oh absolutely man you could have made a saddle out of that face i mean it exactly. good pair of boots um and so I, I watched how they worked and how uh they struggled many years out there if there's a drought or a tornado or hail or whatever so we thought and kenny big kenny comes from a cattle farm up in virginia so we both grew up around that we thought man it's time to write one about the farmers let's write one about the the men we grew up around and that's where it came from thank goodness uh Terry and Jason, they both have great versions of that song. It was a real honor to have them sing it. And you know, you don't know how many combines have been riding around cornfields and everywhere else and listening to that jam at four o'clock in the morning before the sun ever comes up. So just yeah. incredible stuff. So very thankful for that it. one. Yeah, we got yeah, we got to play another right here too. It's off the record here too as well. One from John Rich that came out years back, but I tell you what, one of the ones that hits to the heart right there too. Continues the storytelling here on the backstage pass presented by SandyJuneMusic.com. The latest single, Rolling Strong, across all those digital streaming platforms. It's called The Man. Here it is from John Rich on WSM AM six fifty, the home of the Grand Ole Opry. Signed up to defend us Long ago in 1941 And when they sucker punched us in Pearl Harbor He fought under MacArthur 17 With an Army Thompson gun Well he stormed a lot of beaches Slept in jungles with the leeches He saw things a young man should never see And when they shot him in the shoulder He got back up and he marched forward Left a lot of brothers dead in Kawajalain And if it wasn't for the good Lord and the man There wouldn't be a breath of freedom in this land when I see people on my TV taking shots at Uncle Sam I hope they always remember why they can Cause we'd all be speaking German Living under the flag of Japan If it wasn't for the good Lord and the man If it wasn't for the good Lord and the man Son of a soldier And I'd fight the whole world over If duty called And freedom's on the line But thanks to The greatest generation And the ones still fighting For our nation I've never had to kill For my way of life And if it wasn't For the good lord And the man There wouldn't be a breath of 
freedom in this land When I see people on my TV taking shots at Uncle Sam I hope they always remember why they can Cause we'd all be speaking German Living under the flag of Japan If it wasn't for the good Lord and the man If it wasn't for the good Lord and the man Cause he was one of the millions Who signed up to defend us Long ago in 1941 And when they sucker punched us in Pearl Harbor He fought under MacArthur 17 With an army Thompson gun Hey, what's up, you guys? It's Mary Sarah. I am a Nashville recording artist, and you are listening to Brandon on the Backstage Pass on the home of the Grand Ole Opry WSM. Hey, guys. Brandon Muriel here, host of the Backstage Pass, alongside my co-host, Alan Price. And I want to tell you about one of the best-kept secrets in Smyrna, Tennessee. Located in the heart of the Depot District, you'll find the Front Street Pub. Owners Thomas Williams and his wife, Rachel, have made it a personal mission to provide each customer with the best food, coldest drinks, and the friendliest staff around. Check them out on Facebook and, of course, their website, thefrontstreetpub.com, for all the latest details on upcoming events, concerts, and shows. And, of course, we thank them for bringing us John Rich this week on WSM. It's brought to you by the Front Street Pub. And back here with John Rich on WSM Radio, the home of the Opry, every Sunday morning. The backstage pass again, 5.30 to 6 a.m. here, powered by the Sports Guys Podcast.com. And, of course, many ways to listen, WSM mobile app, WSMRadio.com. And, of course, out there, uh, tune in and iHeartRadio out there, too. Talking about the man with John Rich. And I remember this one. This was off the Country Truth record back in 2009. I love this one. And another one of those great storytelling songs, John. It's a song about my granddaddy. So, uh Imagine if you if you were lucky enough to be around your grandpa for a fair amount of time. You know, if he's anything like mine, they will tell you one of three or four stories every single time you see him. They'll say, sit down, let me tell you the story about the time the mule got out of the barn. And, you know, you go and you know, I've heard it a hundred times, but, yeah, I want to hear it again. So he was a World War II vet. And I know we've all got pictures hanging in our houses or you've seen them at your grandparents' house at one point or another, of service members, and especially the greatest generation, the World War II generation. If I asked you to imagine one of those pictures right now, I bet you can. Mm -hmm. Well, greatest generation guy uh, at 17, he lied about his age to the U.S. Army, told him he was 18 because he was so mad at the train that was coming back through Glasgow, Kentucky, where he's from, loaded down with caskets. He saw that train coming through with just caskets piled all over it. And it was his uncles, his cousins, his neighbors. Uh, and he was so angry and he wanted to go fight and he wasn't old enough to. So he just said, I'll just tell him I'm 18. So they let him in. And he's about five foot four, five foot five, about 115 pounds, a little bitty guy. Uh, but it, just an absolute savage with a rifle. I mean, just hillbilly sniper is what he was. And so he <laughs> He got in there and um, they put him in, in a unit of men that they refer to now as the tunnel rats. So in the Pacific, the Japanese were on, you know, Kawajalin, Iwo Jima, all those islands. And those islands are like volcanic islands. They're full of caves. So as, as our ships would sit out in the ocean, lobbing in bombs, uh, the Japanese would go down into those caves and hide. So they had these little guys like my grandpa that would go in with a short range flamethrower and a grenade belt and a 45 in one side of the cave and his job was to flush the Japanese out the other side of the cave so we could take him prisoner. Well, he did that for a couple of years, sustained multiple purple hearts. He got back home from the war, was hooked on morphine for two years. I mean, had to wean himself off of that PTSD. Like you can't believe till the day he died, but then he became a farmer lived to be 80 years old. So about a month after he died, this song struck me. I said, I got to write a song about him because I considered him the man. You know, he was in my family. That's the man right there. That's that's him. And so the song is simply called the man. But it's it's really to honor the greatest generation, all the men and women that got us to this point in 2024. There, there would be no America to argue about short of the greatest generation showing up. 
Hey, sports wise, NFL college a few weeks out from opening up. John, who does it for you when it comes to college football and of course the National Football League? Well, I am a I'm a University of Texas fan, so I'm a Hook'em Horns guy. But I'm married an Aggie, Texas A and M, which wow. that is the ultimate rivalry. Is so, that the yin versus the yang right there or what? I mean, well, so I make a joke uh, about her that she doesn't appreciate very much, but it's also a it's also a slap at myself. So like when uh, I'll introduce my wife to somebody, I'll go, uh, this is my wife. She has a master's degree from Texas A&M, and I have, a, I have a high school diploma. So basically, we have the same level of education. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, she, goes, she goes, hey. I'm like, well, hey, I also said I, I'm a dummy. You know, it's like I, I barely got out of high school. Uh, no, but that that's always fun when college football rolls around. And now that now that Texas is in the SEC, we're going to see Texas play Texas A and M again. We've been missing that, so uh, it's it's going to be a good year. I, I'm happy to see that they're going to have a real playoff, twelve teams. Nobody can cry or holler about the outcome because everybody's got a chance. You know, if you're number thirteen, at we don't care. You should have done better. But one through twelve, I, don't you guys like that? I love it. Yeah. I think it's great for the top twelve to get out yeah. there. And- now, to be unbiased now, too, and to have it out there left on the field, John, to let the records and the strength of schedule and all that stuff speak for itself. I mean, and now to have the top 12, we can see some upsets as we go from round to round. This is great. I call it uh, the March Madness of college football. I would say whoever wins this year, that'll probably be the most legitimate champion we've had in a long time because they had to go, they had to go back and play because those teams get so close to each other that any given day one team can beat the other. So – I think it's fair, and uh, we're really looking forward to it. It's going to be a lot of fun, too, as well. And, of course, the single revelation is across all those digital streaming platforms out there. You can check out all the music at bigandrich.com. And, of course, John Rich out there on all the social media, too. And, of course, so check out Redneck Riviera when you're always in Nashville, Tennessee. One of the best in country music to do it out there. One of the best songwriters and singers. John Rich here on the Backstage Pass presented by our friends over at sandygmusic.com. Check out our newest single, Rolling Strong, across all those DSPs out there, too. And we're back next week for another great show. John, we appreciate the time, my friend. Thanks for joining us and looking forward to catching up down the road. All Thanks, right. brother. You got it. John Rich there on the Backstage Pass, wsmradio.com. And, of course, we'll see you guys next Sunday from 5.30 to 6 a.m. Take care. God bless. Hey, y'all, this is T. Graham Brown, and you're listening to Backstage Pass right here on WSM Radio, baby.